purpose of this video is to see how this camera works with a new battery and whether it just lasts uh, about two minutes or, or a lot longer. And we want to explain the new variable torque converter. That's its other purpose. So we take a planetary gear set. It consists of three gear elements. One is the sun gear in the middle. The next one is called the planetary gears, of which there may be like three to five usually that uh, rotate around and they're in a planetary gear, a planet gear assembly. And then on the outside, there is the ring gear. Or maybe it's the Oort cloud. So when you put these together, this particular one, if you uh, turn the sun gear, you, know, if you can see that there's a black mark there and a black mark there. So if the body is held stationary and you turn the sun gear once, twice, 2.8 times, then you've turned this shaft once. And this all depends on the relative sizes of the planets and the ring gear, or the sun gear and the ring gear. And if you hold the planet's assembly stationary, there we go here, if you hold the planetary assembly stationary, and we'll just make a mark, then you turn the sun gear once, there's another mark, 1.8 times, and the ring gear has made a complete turn backwards. Okay, so that's, that's the planetary gear set. The next part to the equation is the magnetic part. Of course, with the planetary gear set, with gears, you get a fixed rotation. Now, let's see how, where are we lining up here? Okay, so, oh, I'm halfway down, I'm back up a bit. I'm still a third of the way down, oh well. We uh, take a magnet. Okay, this is a, a strong neodymium magnet, one inch by two inch. Now, if I just uh, slide that down this piece of plywood, not much of a surprise that it just falls. However, if I take a piece of aluminum, what we have is uh, a generator generating into a gigantic short circuit, a chunk of aluminum. And the magnetic forces make a force that's opposite to the force of the magnet. And so the magnet just slowly slides down, unless you get it so steep that it falls away. Now the, the four most conductive elements are silver, copper, aluminum and gold. That's both for heat and electricity. So if we take a piece of silver, we can uh, get the magnet, it will follow the magnet. I'm not touching the silver, I'm well over the top of it. And the same with the copper, which is not much, which is only about 10% less conductive, only the much bigger piece here. And the aluminum is even a bigger piece and it's three-eighths of an inch thick. 
again without touching the magnet onto the aluminum we're getting it to move around the gold oh oh i had to sell the gold till i was old enough to get a pension because uh vendors are by definition unemployed <coughs> i had to stay afloat apparently i'm worth much more to the nation of canada for having reached the magic age of 65 than I ever was trying to create new things that never existed before. So now we'll get more to the point. This planetary here has 5 to 1 ratio, so if you hold the body stationary and turn the sun gear, you have to turn it 5 times. 1, 2, Three, four, five, to get the uh, planet's assembly to turn once. So all else being equal, if this was in the truck now, there's a further 2.2 to, 2 .2 to 1 reduction at the differential to the back wheel past here. So. I need a much smaller unit than if it was taking the entire force of the wheel, it's only taking half the force. And uh, in the normal course of events, this would be affixed to the body of the truck. This isn't the normal course of events, and what we have instead is these are free spinning. So uh, if you turn the motor, then the truck won't move because it's easier just to turn this gear and it'll go backwards four times instead of the truck moving forward it'll go backwards at one quarter speed instead of the truck moving forward at one fifth the speed of the motor shaft and uh, so the next part we combine that with the magnetism and now if you've got the uh, when you, you have the gear wanting to turn backwards but you've got the motor the magnet wanting to pull it forward so you have two conflicting forces you have the the truck doesn't want to move but the magnet wants to pull the body forward instead of letting it freely rotate backwards and there's uh, quite a lot of resistance here. Of course, if you go faster, there's more resistance. Although at some point there is no more to be gained, but up to a certain point, you, the more, the faster the motor shaft is turning, the more it wants to pull the body along with it instead of letting the body freely rotate backwards. So now you have this entire unit is free spinning. It's attached at the motor at the front and you'll have to have a housing and a steady bearing at the back. And as the truck starts moving, as the motor starts turning, the shaft starts spinning and uh, this wants to turn backwards but the magnets want to turn it forward and there's a balance there. So if it's totally balanced, this will essentially stay in one place, not move. And you have the 5 to 1 reduction here, plus the 2.2 to 1 at the differential, and you have an 11, point, 11 to 1 reduction from the motor speed to the wheel speed. That's enough to make the truck move on, uh, even get it out of a pothole and uh, go have some acceleration, climb hills, and the uh, as the truck starts to move, the motor starts to speed up because there's less friction, there's less torque required to to move this. So the faster you're going, in fact, generally the less torque you need until you're going up a hill, and uh, so. With this moving, the entire thing starts to turn. And as the body turns, 
you are now creating a, a change because the sun gear isn't making as many rotations. The planets aren't going around as fast. So the gear ratio between the motor and the output shaft to the differential starts to reduce. And the faster you're going and the more close to unity speed you are, the more this is all spinning one to one. So on the highway, you've got the motor turning 1,200 RPM, and you've got the wheels turning 1,000 RPM. So you've got almost a one to one, I guess that would be 2.2 plus a bit to one. You'd be going 2,500 RPM, and the wheels would be doing 1,000 RPM on the highway. And uh, so you've, you've reduced it from the 11 to one down to maybe 2.4 to one or something, um, which is mostly in the differential gear rather than in this assembly, which is entirely spinning freely. And so the motor shaft and the output shaft are turning the same speed. And there you have it. What remains to be seen is how much magnetism is a good balance for the drive. Uh, this is a rotor I had from making an axial flux motor. Um, and this is a disc I found that happened to be a good match for it. So I'm going to try those first and see if that's enough magnetic coupling. If it's uh, too much, I can back the aluminum rotor off. If it's not enough, I can get it a little closer. And if it's really not enough, I can add another magnet rotor on this side. And if that's still not quite enough, I can change this from aluminum to copper. I don't really fancy trying to change it to silver. <laughs> okay, there we are. So next thing, this all has to be put into a housing and mounted in the truck, or at least some kind of uh, uh, rig to just to test it out and see how it works. And obviously the camera battery is lasting way longer than the other one, although, gosh, down to almost half. Without uh, going to move it again, I thought I would try to show the test vehicle. It's uh, Miles ZX40 mini cargo truck, electric, and uh, it's made uh, by Miles, who is uh, out of business now, <laughs> in uh, 2009, and it's got all the sort of typical electric car conversion parts in it that you would find in a someone's converted car converted from gas to electric the test setup is uh, pretty similar to how I already had things set up except that uh, the planetary gear instead of being fixed this actually showing somewhere there is uh, of course free to rotate uh, the, it's a spline shaft at the motor going to the rotors and the planetary gear and then the bottom end is just I held the the uh, drive shaft inside this uh, chunk of metal that I set up here so that it won't uh, drop down or anything. So, uh, so far I don't have a proper bearing on here and a, a housing hole fixing everything in place. Okay, the first time I tried it I had some trouble with the rotor coming loose 
and uh, eventually finally figured that out and managed to tighten up the set screw on the rotor without taking it all apart so finally got in the truck and tried one more time and so the next uh, clip is the very first time it actually drove the truck yeah I got in and said nothing ventured nothing gained and put it on and said oh great zod it moved <laughs> In the second test, I had it to uh, kind of jump over a little piece of plywood and a little short 2x4 <laughs> that actually has kind of rounded edges. And uh, both the fact that it spun so much and the fact that it actually had trouble backing up over the 2x4 uh, suggests that there isn't quite enough magnetic coupling. It's, uh, I'm sure, in the right ballpark, but just uh, needs a little more. And interestingly, between the time I did the setup on the bench and the time that I actually had it in the truck running, I discovered you could make a, what's called a, a haulback uh, configuration. They called it a haulback array, which are confused me for a long time but I had just discovered you could make a rotor that way and it would have more magnetic flux than just the alternating north-south by having some sideways ones that reinforce the in one direction and reduce it on the back side and I just about hit the garage door backing up <laughs> out of view last time I tried to put uh, the camera on the side of the truck with a couple of C-clamps but I didn't see a way to, to inverse the video so it's upside down <laughs> the next day I uh, opened the garage door and backed out I only went about 16 feet but uh, you can see in this video, as I speed up a little bit, that the spin on the planetary gear body actually changes and it actually stops and, and reverses. So that whole part of the theory was working out just nicely.
So next I'll be uh, making the haulback, converting that rotor to have the haulback effect and uh, some more uh, depths of magnetic field out towards the front, which hopefully should bring it into pretty good balance with the mechanical reduction gears. Um, and in that I'll, I'll try and put, uh, I'll show the components separately and uh, what each little piece is in case anybody wants to try buying them, you know what they, they're called and uh, where to get them hopefully. So there you have it, the first tests of the mechanical slash magnetic automatic variable torque converter. Give us a thumbs up if you thought the content was worth it. Thank you.